Now we are going to study the bone ulna. It is the medial bone of the forearm. It has a elongated upper end which looks like a hook and a smaller lower end. In between lies the shaft of the ulna. For side determination, the upper end is hook like with its concavity facing forwards. Lateral border is sharp and crest like. Pointed styloid process lies posterior medial to the rounded head of ulna at its lower end. So the given bone belongs to the right side. Features of ulna. In the upper end it has two processes. First one is the olecranon process. It projects upwards from the shaft and it has five surfaces. Superior surface, triceps is attached or inserted on its rough posterior two-third and the capsular ligament is attached anteriorly near its margins. Anterior surface, it forms the part of the trochlear notch. Posterior surface, it is subcutaneous. A bursa separates the posterior surface from the skin. Upper part forms the point of the elbow. It has a medial surface and the lateral surface. Anconius is inserted on its lateral surface. Now the coronoid process. It projects forwards from the shaft just below the olecranon process. Superior surface forms the lower part of the trochlear notch. Anterior surface at its lower corner forms a tuberosity that is the ulnar tuberosity. Brachialis muscle is inserted to this tuberosity. It has the medial surface and the lateral surface. Upper part of this lateral surface is articular for the head of radius, hence called as the radial notch. Annular ligament is attached to the anterior and posterior margins of this radial notch. The lower part of the lateral surface is depressed area and this area is called as the supinator fossa. This fossa accommodates the radial tuberosity of the radius. Supinator fossa is limited posteriorly by a crest. It is called as the supinator crest. The supinator muscle arises from the supinator fossa and the supinator crest. Now the notches, also we call the articular surfaces. The trochlear notch, it articulates with the trochlea of humerus. The capsule of the elbow joint is attached all around except the radial notch. Radial notch articulates with the head of radius to form the superior radio ulnar joint and the annular ligament is attached to its anterior and posterior margins. Now going to the shaft, it has three borders. The interosseous or the lateral border is the sharpest in the middle to fourth. Inferiorly, it can be traced to the lateral side of the head. Superiorly, it is continuous with the supinator crest. The anterior border, it is thick and rounded. It begins above on the medial side of the ulnar tuberosity, passes backwards in its lower one-third and terminates at the medial side of the styloid process. The posterior border is subcutaneous. It begins above at the apex of the triangular subcutaneous area at the back of the olecranon process and terminates at the base of the styloid process. Now the surfaces, it has three surfaces, anterior surface, medial surface and the posterior surface. The anterior surface lies between anterior 
and the interosseous border neutrin foramen is seen on its upper part and it is directed downwards medial surface it lies between the anterior border and the posterior border and the posterior surface lies between the posterior border and the interosseous border <coughs> now the posterior surface is subdivided into three areas by two lines a oblique line divides into the upper and the lower parts the lower part is again divided by a vertical line into medial and the lateral area now the lower end of ulna it is made up of head and the styloid process the head of the ulna articulates with the ulnar notch of radius and forms the inferior radio ulnar joint whereas the styloid process projects downwards from posterior medial side of lower end of ulna there is a groove between the head and the styloid process for the tendon of extensor carpi ulnaris now going to the attachments flexor digitorum profundus it arises from the upper 3/4 of anterior and the medial surface of the shaft of ulna and also continues on the medial surface of coronoid and the olecranon process pronator quadratus takes origin from the oblique ridge on lower part of the anterior surface <coughs> the lateral part of the posterior surface gives origin from above downwards to three muscles abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and extensor indicis these three muscles also take the origin from the interosseous membrane the capsular ligament of the elbow joint is attached to the margins of the trochlear notch annular ligament of the superior radio ulnar joint is attached to the two margins of the radial notch of ulna there is a triangular articular disc of the inferior radio ulnar joint which is attached by its apex to the lateral surface of styloid process now the ossification of ulna the primary center appears during eighth week of intrauterine life and it has two secondary centers the first secondary center is for the olecranon process which appears during the 10th year of life and fuses with the shaft during 16th year of life the second secondary center appears for the lower end at 5th year of life and fuses with the shaft by about 18th year of life now the applied aspects related to the ulna now ulna remains stable and gives stability for the both the joints which form the supination and pronation for the movement of the radius the second applied aspect is the tip of the olecranon process it lies in line with the two epicondyles of humerus in fully extended elbow and in a fully fixed elbow the three points face equilateral triangle in the dislocation of elbow this relation is altered now fracture of shaft of ulna may be alone or in association with fracture of radius usually the single bone fracture are very rare fracture of the olecranon process occurs if one falls on the point of the elbow